Hello friends, this video on metal and non-metal part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching this video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 6. So what we'll do is we'll react with water now because water is the next common level thing. So we'll, we know that metal plus water is nothing but metal oxide and hydrogen. That's the reaction we know. So we'll do the reaction, we'll react this guy with water and see what happens. Also, metal oxide plus water, if you say, you get metal hydroxide, correct? So, and please note, all the metals will not react with water, we know this, and that's the reason we are using this, with the hope that we may be able to find the reactive, uh, we can arrange the metals in the reactive uh, order. So, we'll do the activity, with this activity, we'll try to react uh, potassium and sodium with water, and we'll observe that potassium and sodium react violently with cold water. Even with cold water, when the water is cold, it reacts violently. In case of sodium and potassium, the reaction is so violent and it's exothermic that it involves hydrogen gas and catches fire immediately. You take sodium, you put a drop of water, it catches fire immediately. It is so exothermic. When you talk about the, exam, uh, the equation, you take potassium, you take water, it gives potassium hydroxide, water, uh, hydrogen and heat energy. Same thing with sodium. Sodium, you take water, it gives sodium hydroxide, hydrogen and heat energy, right? The reaction of calcium with water is a little less violent. Heat evolved is not sufficient for hydrogen to catch fire. Heat is involved, but it doesn't catch fire. So you with calcium, with water, you get calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Manganese, it doesn't react with cold water. It reacts only with hot water. So till now, this guy reacts with cold water. This guy reacts only with hot water to form manganese hydroxide and hydrogen. So with this, you can see that you can say that I have my sodium potassium is one. We don't know which one is more reactive now. But calcium and manganese, we can say that calcium is more reactive than manganese. Right? So we can create this kind of series because calcium reacts with cold water, magnesium reacts with only hot water. Correct. The next elements, aluminium, iron, and zinc, they don't react either with cold water and hot water. But they react with steam. So aluminium, iron, and zinc are now one. Aluminium, iron, and zinc. But still we are not sure which one is more reactive. But aluminium, iron, and zinc are in one bucket now. Right? So aluminium will give this Al2O3, aluminium oxide plus hydrogen gas. Iron will give fe 3 o 4 ferric oxide and hydrogen gas. Elements like lead, copper, silver and gold do not react with water at all. These elements are not reacting with water at all. That means we can say that uh, lead, copper, sil gold and silver are in the next lot. Correct. So with this experiment, with the old experiment, what we can now is tell is, we have the sodium, potassium, right? And then we have, if you see my calcium, magnesium. I have calcium, magnesium, then I have aluminium, iron, zinc, and then I have lead and copper. I knew that lead and copper are less reactive than gold. This we did from the oxidation thing because copper and lead oxidize, the gold and silver doesn't oxidize, right? So I have this series now. Still, I don't have the exact series. Correct. So let's do something. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.